Welcome, folks, to another edition of Intercept U, our continuing and ongoing discussion of high-performance buildings. Uh, we welcome you back today for a discussion about uh, high-efficiency buildings and, and talking to your customers. Uh, one of the things we always want to mention to you is the importance of hitting like and subscribe if this is something that you find valuable and would like others to be able to see. It really helps us to get our message out there. Yeah, what we find is uh, that a lot of individuals we talk to will make the comment, boy, I wish I would have known about this, or I wish this would have been around when I built my house. Well, we've been building our panels since 1981. This is not new, new construction, but the message doesn't always get out to individuals. So by hitting like and subscribe, that's one of the ways we can help to, to let pe other people know uh, what we're doing and see if it fits in with what they're, what they're focusing on. So what we're going to talk about today specifically is our value. Now you might think, okay, I'm pretty familiar with our value, but what we want to do is, is talk about how do you explain our value to your customers? Because, and, and how do you explain high performance buildings? Now, if you're a homeowner, if you're watching this as a homeowner, uh, you might benefit from this discussion because what we're going to do is break it down to a more a simple area or a simple way of thinking about it. If you're a builder, you might think, well, I know all of this. This is, this is pretty, pretty obvious to me. I've been dealing with this for a long time. But sometimes we need to be reminded of, of how to simplify it because our customers, the homeowners that we're talking to and, and working with every day, they don't do this for a living. They don't have these conversations. They don't go to building science seminars like the rest of us do. And so how, how can we break this down in a way that they really understand the value of building and what it takes to build a high performance structure? And so what we're going to do, and you have to remember the vantage point I'm coming to you from. I'm coming to you from the vantage point of a builder, not an engineer. So if you hold me to a standard of making sure everything I say can be proven by an engineer, uh, that's, that's not my take. We have engineers available that can talk about this and we can show the charts and so on. But from the standpoint of a builder, what, is, what does it mean to build a high performance building and really what is our value first of all? So what is it? How important is it? What are the weaknesses when we talk about our value? Why is it focused on so much? Those are some things that we just want to touch on briefly. So first of all, just the idea of when you're explaining to your customer what is our value, what does that mean? It's basically the, the measurement of how long it takes from heat for heat or, or to transfer from one side of a wall to another. So you have a setting where you have a wall with two different temperatures and how long does it take for those temperatures to balance out? That's the basic idea of what our value is. How long does it take for that heat energy to travel through uh, or, or to be drawn out of that structure. How important is it? Well, it's, it's very important. It's one third of the equation that creates an energy efficient building. Now we say it's one third of the equation. We'll talk about the other two thirds as we go on, but one third is a big deal. So we don't want to downplay the importance of our value. It is important, but it's not the whole picture. So what's the weakness of our value? Well, one is that it's only one third, but, but the other is the conditions under which our value tends to be measured. It's measured in a lab under perfect conditions with no wind, no breeze, there's nothing else factored in other than basically it, it, like measuring a cooler. How long does it take something if you put it in a cooler, how long does it take for that to thaw uh, under perfect conditions? Well, we know that we don't live in a world with perfect conditions the wind is blowing there's there's things going on around our homes all the time and so that's kind of the weakness of our value is that it's not a real world measurement that we live in so knowing that why is it focused on so much well it's interesting that it's basically the only energy milestone that traditional construction can can, can consistently achieve what do i mean by that well, the other two areas that we're going to talk about are, are weaknesses in traditional construction. But our value, you can build as much our value into a structure as you want. You can add and add and add more insulation. You can add insulation in the attic. You can make thicker walls and add more insulation in the walls. So you can achieve whatever our value number or box that you want to check. So it's easy to talk about that one. But what are the other two-thirds of the equation? 
Now remember, we're focusing on this from the standpoint of explaining this to, to homeowners, to a customer, and breaking this down. So while you may know this, it, it's important that we explain to our customers what air infiltration and thermal bridging is. So let's just break those down for just a moment. First of all, air infiltration. This is about the air leaking through the walls or the roof of our house. This, it's simply how much air transfers through when the wind blows, especially, and creates uh, a vacuum outside, and how much air is drawn out of our houses. Now, we might think, well, does that really happen? The best way I can illustrate this is uh, over the years, all of us have, have done uh, remodels. We've done demolition of houses. And what happens when you open up the walls of, of a house that has insulation in the walls uh, that allows air infiltration? So your, your standard fluffy insulation that's in the walls. Well, it's dirty. It's filthy. And now, it didn't used to really dawn on me why that was so dirty. But the reality is, when we, when we built the house, when we put that in there, it was a very clean environment. And we had a little sawdust around, but overall it was, a, it was a very clean environment. Now, this is just filthy dirty. Why is that? It's because of the air passing back and forth through the walls, both from the inside and the dust and dander and pet fur and things of that nature that, that go from the inside out. And then also the pollens and dirt and, and dust that's in the air from the outside coming in. And as that air passes back and forth through that filtration system of that, of that insulation, it filters out some of those allergens, some of those pollens, some of the particles that are in the wall. So when you see how much dirt and dust is in that insulation, and you handle it very, very carefully when you're doing a demo, uh, because if you just bump it, this cloud comes out of it. Well, that's all from air passing back and forth. So air infiltration, infiltration is a real issue. It's something that re really does happen. And it, uh, can, can, it can dramatically affect energy consumption. So that's the other, one of the other thirds, air infiltration. And then the other third, the third leg of this stool, you might say, is thermal bridging. What is thermal bridging? Well, it's, it's the parts of the structure that have a much lower R value or transfer heat much easier than the insulation. So typically in a, in a wall, an exterior wall, we put a two by six stud every 16 inches on center. That, that stud has a much lower R value. If you have a fluffy insulation, a standard insulation in the walls, you might have an R19 between the studs, but at each stud, you only have about an R6. Well, that's a dramatic difference. Does it, does it really affect the house? Well, I go back to my drywall days. I was a drywall contractor for many years. And whenever I would spray paint or texture on a cold day, you know, 20, 20 degrees outside or colder, the texture or the paint would dry slower over each stud. You could see the, the, the outline of every stud around the exterior walls. Why was that? Well, because the, the drywall was actually colder because of the heat transfer, the, the loss of heat at each stud. Now, you might think, okay, well, every 16 inches, it's an inch and a half. Is that really that big a difference? Well, in a traditional constructed house, about 25% of your house is those studs. So about 75% of your house is insulated, and 25% of it, because of an, a, a stud every 16 inches, has that thermal bridge. It's a substantial difference. The amount of heat that is drawn out through the thermal bridging really does make a difference. So that kind of helps us to, to break it down. When we look at the overall R value or, of, of a wall with traditional stick-built construction, we can go from what we expect to be an R19 because of the insulation that's in it, but it actually measures out when you factor in the thermal bridges all the way down to an R13. Um, because of the, of the bridging. So does that make a difference? Absolutely. Our overall R value of that wall is dramatically reduced. Now remember, R value is how quickly that heat transfers from the inside to the out, or how quickly the treat, heat transfers from the outside to the in during the air conditioning season. So it really does make a difference. 
So how do we factor in all three legs of this stool? Well, that's what we talk about every day with intercept sabs, is the, the dramatic uh, reduction in air infiltration. Uh, so dramatic that when your heating and air conditioning professional starts to put together the, the, the paperwork to show what the heat loss, the, to calculate the heat loss of your house, when they type in to their program that it's a SIP house, that is a, a, a big jump towards everything being insulated, uh, reducing that 25% of the house being thermal bridges to about 2% of the house being thermal bridges. And the, the difference in, in air infiltration because a solid ex expanded, expanded polystyrene block allows no air through it. It stops the air, it's not fluffy, it's not light, it's not something, it's not a filter at all. And so immediately, as soon as they type SIPs into their programming, it reduces the energy consumption dramatically right in their software. So that's how we accomplish it. So what you can do to learn more about that is click on some of the links uh, associated with this video to see how you, can, how you can achieve the goals that you're looking for. So that helps you as a builder to achieve your goals of being able to talk to your customer and explain to them the value of building with high performance intercept ready to assemble panels. And it also helps your customer feel very good about the decisions that they're making. So we look forward to our next discussion and until then you enjoy your day.